It's not like you, I can teach it to you. Once you catch the vision, you got it. Catch the Vision Podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. That's not how this worked, and it's never worked this way. If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Here's your hosts, John Trimble and Mike Cornwell. All right, we're here. This is 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Saturday. Hey, John. <laughs> This is a special episode. I'll, we'll call this the disaster edition. And, um, you know, this is like literally the day after, the night after, there's kind of this big storm here in Unbelievable. Eastern Tennessee. And um, I'm sure none of the, you know, uh, video or any of that stuff is going to make the, the proverbial news or any of that. Maybe. Even th Even though it was... I mean, you see some of the videos on Facebook. Have you seen the videos on Facebook? Yeah, a little there's some, bit. There's some bad ones. Yeah. We were bad. We were moated all the way around the house. It was a moat. Man, you got you got lucky. Yeah. Well, the house is up like by the road. Uh-huh. Technically the house, but the basement, we got a couple, 22 inches. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. we're just high enough that it diverted and went right around our house. Oh, I see. I see. It's low in the back. It is low in the backyard. Yeah. Big, it does kind of slope down. Yeah. The, um, dude, it was... Crazy out here. This whole valley was full of water. I didn't know it was that big low area there. That thing must have filled with water. The whole thing. Literally from, so the, um, you know, we got our little slope here, which that's like the top of the hill here. We're at kind of the first turn down and then it goes down and then there's another step with that house right there. That house, um, certainly the water never got that high, but you go down a little bit right there and it's basically the start of like a flat field straight to the creek. That whole field was underwater, and not like a little bit of water, but a lot of water. When, yeah. you, when you leave here, go take a look. There are literally boulders sitting in the middle of that field, lots well, of them. Well, you can't get across your street right here, this one right here next to you, left. It's all dirt and washed out, and the creek is still flowing through it. They're, they're up there now trying to... Which one are you talking about? All right, if you go You're down here and turn left. That first one there. You, yeah. can't, get, you can't get through there. It's all, it's thick mud and yeah, rocks. Yeah, def definitely thick mud. Thick mud and rocks. The water never made it over the bridge, thank God, because that bridge would be gone. And we use that bridge all the time. I don't even know if that bridge is safe. Um, <laughs> it's a good question. The huh? Dude, we went over there and we we saw it. There was water. <laughs> Certainly there was a torrent on, on the, the inside over there. But then on th this side, there was water starting to go, go around it. So, I mean, now that, that's moments away from water going over the top so, of that. So, in Damascus, up there, yeah. they had to literally helicopter a few people out. I'm not surprised. And a couple of houses left their foundation, went down the river, whatever. Dude, this guy over here is ridiculously lucky because they were right in the middle of it. Like, the, the stream was going through their freaking, like, it was hitting their house and, like, splitting around. And surprisingly, it did not take it off its foundations. Hmm. But all their stuff got just like totally blown around and stuff like that. We're, oh, yeah. we're looking over there. Like I got, I have video actually on my camera. I went over there and, and went and looked at it. This, this, by the way, this was like after, you know, certainly the waters were going up or whatever, but this is after all the wind. Uh, I was out in the thick of it during all the craziness. See, this is the aftermath of this talk we had last saturday <laughs> trying to get a get over to get through that vision you know and and, and get a holding of it you know it, it just rocks the world it rocks the world i will tell you i i brought <laughs> i brought that stuff to up to our bible study and yeah it started uh, getting real antsy we'll put it that way yeah <laughs> tyler said it, the, and i also told him i said uh, did mike say not to tell me that I was right. He goes, yeah. We we told him not to. <laughs> yes, they well, were. The, thanks a lot. They were the ones to say, don't bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was crazy. So um, we've been running the pump because we got tons of rain the last couple of days or whatever. No, and of course oh, it's yeah. bad that you know the storm's gonna hit after everything's all saturated. So we had been running these pumps. We had two basically small pumps. We were pumping the basement to keep it, you know, very very good. And then. I was telling everybody, I'm like, it's not going to be that bad. We're only supposed to get like two more inches, even though we got two inches the day before. It's not supposed to be all that bad, which I still don't know why it was so bad. But the <coughs> about 9, 8.30 a.m., we went like downstairs and like the water was like 
definitely coming up. So we're like, okay, we got to get an action. And Christine bought accidentally bought a pump um, from Big John's that was like it's like a proper sump pump. Yeah. And so it requires That's like it requires like plumbing and stuff like that. Yeah. So we didn't have any any of this plumbing. Versus like another one that might come with like a hose or a garden attachment or something like that, which is what we were using. And so this half this half horsepower pump was like, it was really perfect, but we didn't have the plumbing. So I'm like, okay, I'll go out. And we still had power. Yeah. I was like, well, I'll go out uh, to Big John's and maybe they'll be open. And I'm like, they probably will. I actually tried to go get coffee yesterday and I think they were over there, but they, they lost power throughout town. So anyway, so I went back out and, you know, it was starting to get windy. I, you know, I didn't think nothing about it and notice again, all the power out in, in town. I'm like, well, it might be power out in John, Big John. So I get in, open the door. It's dark. There's a couple people with flashlights in there yeah. in the wa- and there was like water on the ground. Oh, really? I was Yeah. And I was like, okay. I'm like, Uh-oh. are y'all open? <laughs> <laughs> it was very awkward. And they're like maybe i'm like okay i'm like do you take cash <laughs> which by the way that's a good reason to have cash on you yeah really because definitely go. during a time when there's no computers as much as people will whine and cry about the u.s dollars value they will take cash yeah so so anyway so i go in there and was able to leave with the pvc pipe i needed and all the attachments and i was like doing this all in my head going like I've only got one shot at this, yeah. so it's like I better make sure that I got what I need because once I leave here, you know, probably right. not going to be able to come back. Or I really don't want to come back. So I left. And I had two gas cans, and I was trying to get I was trying to get gas. So I went to Food Line, and they still had power. And so I was like, okay, I'll go to the gas station that's right there. Well, by the time I got to got there, they lost power. Oh. And then I turn and see the gas station that had power. So I come back around and I go and go around town. And the shell had power. And so again, just put this in perspective, we're now getting like 40, 50 mile an hour winds. It's we're getting hit by the storm. So I go there, I'm like, yes. And so I wait for this guy to get out of the way, I get on the pump. I fill two five gallon gas cans. The moment I filled that second gas can, they lost power. Oh <laughs> so I was like, thank goodness, because we needed this this yeah. gal this gas. So we ca- I started coming back. And there had been no trees falling. There really was nothing going on. There's no high water. There's nothing. Um, and so I was coming up uh, Church Street, and just before you turn to go to the high school, a tree had fallen in the road, and I think uh, like a like a power line or something like came down. And so this guy, I, I presume, he was like a fire department or something. I was like trying to pass him to like, hey, I'm just going to go. And he's like, no, you got to go around. I was like, okay. I'm like, I don't think he understands what go around means. Because that's a long way around. Go around yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I'm going, you know, the bypass at like 70 miles an hour, like jet skiing on the water. Because I'm like, I got to get back like now. Because by that point, there was already six inches of water in my basement. And it's like, we got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff down there to include my servers down there. Yeah. So... Um, I finally get around and this way up here on divide road all the way, just before you start to get into the little subdivision area, yeah. there's a tree in the road. So I'm like, okay, well, this is it. There is no going back. So I, I hop out, I call Christine on the phone, you know, it's like crazy rain and wind. And I was just like, Hey, you need to come over here now with the chainsaw. Cause I'm, I'm stuck. And so I go over there and I notice, um, uh, and I was like, there was somebody on the other side, they were stopped and it was like, just me. And then people started kind of coming behind me and getting stuck. And I was like, well, I'm definitely getting out. So I go over there and see most of the tree had, um, I think it was like a sweet gum or a poplar hitting the ground, basically exploded the tree. So most of it could actually be grabbed by hand and moved out of the way. And it was only like some pretty small stuff that actually needed that chainsaw. And in theory, we probably could have got around with it without the chainsaw. And at this, by this point, I called Christine because she hadn't showed up for like 15 minutes. I'm like, dude, you do not understand. <laughs> I am trapped. And then she's like, we got to hurry. The water's rising. Ah! I was like, okay, get here. Like, come on. And so eventually I see her come up and we get the chainsaw. We cut it. So I wanted to bring some of this stuff up because, you know, this is a leadership podcast. There was a lot of leadership that happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, I was getting out of that car and I'm going to clear that thing regardless. I wasn't going to wait for somebody. I'm definitely not waiting for police or something like that. That Because literally there's an emergency everywhere. So, it's everywhere, yeah. So there's no waiting for anyone. And so I get out and start doing this. And, you know, there's people in their cars that were sitting there waiting, waiting for me to clear the ground for them. 
And eventually this old lady comes out of her truck to come help me. And I'm like, yes, the old lady's going to come help me. And then eventually some other guy or whatever. But there was a bunch of people that just sat in their cars and they just they just waited for us to clear. And I was like, this is... Well, our house looked so bad that we had two people in big pickup trucks stop and say, you need to be rescued? And we're sitting on our front porch going, we're good. The whole creek kind of went right around our house like a moat. It was perfect. That's interesting. And went into the field and then... A, Bugs and bubbles, or whatever they call it there, bark yeah, and bubble, yeah, yeah. completely inundated, completely covered water. Oh, really? But it never touched us. We were just that high enough to... to um, That's good, because I was definitely concerned about you guys, because that water was ridiculous when I was down there at Big John's at 9 a.m. And that and the worst hit at like 11.10 or 11, yeah, 11, yeah. 11.30. So we finally clear here, and we start going, and I'm like, you know... I'm sure it's probably fine. I want to cross here at the nicer bridge and come across. And then the moment I made it up that hill, I saw, okay, there's two tr small trees down. I'm like, okay, I've got the small chainsaw now. So I started cutting it up. But I walked up just high enough to see there was a massive tree down at the top. I'm like, this is not yeah, going to work. it's like eight trees together all <laughs> fell down. I couldn't get through. And I, I, I tried that, but... I, I did not um I did not want to risk it because that area is like just nothing but lined with trees. Yeah. And I did not want those trees to fall on me. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Yep. And so I turned around and I went back and you know, Christine mentioned, Oh, there's a little bit of water on the road. And I'm like, Okay. You know, this is interesting. What I didn't know is so there's three entrances to this area. The one all the way over there, um That's the one it's I not it's not a over. bridge. It's right. uh it, there's no bridge there. And so generally that path was kind of clear, but uh, I, I decided to go to the bridge because when I started coming down here, dude, the water was across the road all the way. I'm like, dude, I'm not, I don't want to do that. In hindsight, that probably would have been okay because I would have been going like with the water. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the creek's going along with the road. So I was like, F that. Uh, I see there's a little bit of water in the road right here. And then the bridge is there. And it's like the bridge looks intact and the water doesn't look so high that, you know, it's ridiculous. But, um, so I basically gunned it through, <laughs> through the water and then got on the bridge and like got over and there was like somebody, a friend of ours, like parked right in the middle of the road. I'm just like, dude, get out of the way. What are you doing? Blocking a road. And so drove around them. I pulled into my my uh, driveway, or I couldn't pull in the driveway because we had hoses going and all this, and Christine parked in the one parking spot. And so I just kind of pulled into the grass where you see me now. No sooner than I pulled in, two trees fell on either side of my car. No way. And, and blocked us in, yes. <laughs> so we're talking like within 20 to 30 seconds of me pulling in there, we were like trapped. Man, so it's like, dude, fun, we got lucky. You had, fun, you had a fun day, though. Oh, my goodness. And then, we, of course, we came in here. I had to marshal the troops, get them to stop hanging out by the windows because it's like, dude, there's trees <laughs> coming down everywhere. And by this point, suddenly there's one or two here. But within the yeah. next within the next hour, definitely multiple trees going oh, up there. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them down over here. They're going to be day, they're gonna be a full day or two cutting them down. Well, to make a long story short, I ended up was able to glue all the PVC and and yep. get it all together. Got that pump, ran the two generators. Thank goodness they were working, uh, and was able to pump all that water out yesterday. I mean, it was definitely over six inches. Um, we got all that out. Came over here. There was at least two inches of water in the office, but luckily there's just I kept looking around, and the only thing that was sitting on the ground of of note was my big camera. But it was like high enough up or it was like on something that it it's yeah. just like the bottom of it got touched with water. And it, it worked, obviously, because I brought it out and was videotaping with it. <laughs> but we spent the rest of the day actually going up and clearing all the trees up there. There was a really there was a black walnut. I, I kid you not, that is this big, that was across that road. That one alone probably took us three hours. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so to bring up some leadership stuff, again, <laughs> leader, leadership being getting other people to, to do actions. Um, yeah, this this guy across the road here, you know, he was kind of cleaning up some of his, some trees that had fallen, like little things. It was really of no, of no big deal. And so him and I sort of kind of walking up here and well, he was using his little, um, oh, they're coming in here. They want coffee? Is that yeah, your coffee? That's coffee. Get your coffee. We had quite an eventual here in eastern Tennessee. Unbelievable. Hey, John, you need coffee? 
Uh, no, I had mine. Okay. I, I appreciate it. I, besides, I put all kinds of junk in it. That's okay. I do, too. <laughs> I actually made you a maple coffee. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. For thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, it's recorded that this is one of the most historical storms that got all the way up here from the Gulf of yeah, Mexico. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of times we get rain and, you know, but this guy, Helene or whatever, she just, and she's still beating it up in uh, Kentucky right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what, it, do you know, was it a tropical depression or a storm? When it well, it here? started as a depression, but no, here it was, the, it was just a huge. Just, just a storm. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, I, you don't have a hurricane over land for wind. Really, you might have a category one, but it's unusual because land slows it down. Yeah, sure. But this was well, we had sixty, when, seventy when, some places. So. When we when we moved here, um, I don't remember when it was. Maybe it was like two years ago. I mean, we moved here later, longer ago than that. But I went and looked up the historical hurricane patterns, Things. and I, there's been at least six or seven that have been here in the last hundred years. It's very rare. Yeah, it's not there was one in like ninety one or ninety three yeah. or something like that. But there, there really hasn't been one since. Well, this guy is seventy three years old. So I've not seen this water in this creek like this since I was a very small kid. Sure. Yep. So that's sixty seven years. But <clears throat> this is one of the things that Christine and I, um, as she is a you know a master's trained geologist and and I, more or less got a um, a. I got a minor in geology. One of the things that we know right out of the gate, we can read landscapes. That's that's something that the two of us are really skilled at. And other people don't think anything about it's to me it's really shocking why people don't actually look at the world that they live in. But <laughs> you might you should always ask yourself, why does this place look like this? Why are there mountains there? Why is there a small hill here? Why is it like, you know, it's yeah. it's kind of shaped like this? Why is it that next to all these little tiny baby streams there's this flat land that goes you know far and wide out well the reason is is because that water rises up and it deposits soil around there and it, and it erodes the heck out of it so the water that we saw yesterday wasn't even high enough to have matched the fullness of the base of this valley in other words yeah. there has been many 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 times that water going all the way up to the bottom there. And long story short, you shouldn't be anywhere near any of those creeks. The only thing the saving grace for you guys is how big that ditch is in your front yard, which is massive. Oh, oh it's huge. But that same... It, it that, went up six to seven feet. I mean, that oh, yeah, water was crazy. from where it was six to seven feet up, it was touching the bottom of the bridge, shooting oh, water man. over the bridge. That's I mean, crazy. I didn't know that. And then it broke through on the side by uh, that little plaza there where yeah. the second second chance stuff is and it when it broke through it came right down our driveway i had to drive 12 inches of water up to get it up the hill up the hill it's dry so yeah. i put my cars up there yeah it makes sense tyler did too and then uh we uh watched as it diverted before my carport there and just made a whole new creek into the field around the, exactly around the house and back out yeah that makes sense the so um we we were glad for I that. Mean, you got to think like so. There's these main valleys. There's the there's kind of the Doe Valley. There's the Neva Valley, and there's this valley here that then opens up where you guys live, and it goes back that way. The reason why that valley exists, like you know, you go a little bit further, and there's those fields right that go yeah. way over. The reason why all that exists is because all of that has been underwater innumerable times. Yeah, all of it, <laughs> and this the stream that they basically have fortified into a ditch that thing used to whip through that valley doing this kind of thing and so it is it's been all over the place well, it's it was, only recently when they built like that into a ditch that does it not do that well the one thing about the storm is you can always tell leaders because they're the ones that take the initiative to do something yes that's where i was getting ready to get into you know what i mean they, they're actually taking initiative to do something about it Whereas others are sitting there, whoa, whoa, what, what are we going to do? Where was, what we, was me, you know? We saw a lot of that yesterday. And, well, well, these people were in their homes. It's getting high up in the water, and they're in their, so they decide to climb up on the roof. Oh, I mean, no offense, but 
You can get rescued in the water too, you know. You don't have to climb on the roof. So I mean, to me, roof, it's a little crazy to be on the roof because a lot of places around here have a lot of tall trees. I don't want to be on the roof. Plus, it's, it's you know, you get on a roof, you, can, you know, it's dangerous just that much. You it don't know dangerous. what you're doing. You know? Especially given the, the wind. So, the, the, this is historical storm here. Caused a lot of damage, but it's a typical... And, and funny, the news will interview people that are completely clueless. <laughs> and you, you interview them and they go, you know, it's like uh, Fox really said, <coughs> you get this woman, all I could think about, my her house floated by and all I could think of was, there goes my china that, that she borrowed from me. Uh, it's like... <laughs> okay. People are just... I don't know what the word, the better word for stupid is, but it's it's kind of the word stupid, I think. It's so uh, <laughs> to, to make some of these leadership points that are worth noting here. So when this guy uh, and I were starting to kind of walk up and we're kind of doing a little bit of cleanup, just from the activity of doing that, it started pulling people out of their house to actually come and help us. Like, hello. And yeah. so um, we came up here and it was kind of a smaller tree. Uh, that was up here, so we started basically uh, cleaning all that up. We went totally around that big that that black walnut because we're like, there's no way we're gonna be able to handle this thing. No. So we went around. We started taking out the next one, and we took out the next one. And by the time we came back, somebody from down the road up here, which I hadn't met yet, but my wife's met one time, dude, he was over here taking down this black walnut. Jeez. And so. Um, and by the time that uh, we had done these couple trees, we probably had four or five people actually helping us. Yeah. And that just goes to show you that they see it and it's like, well, I can't be the person who's not helping. Like, <laughs> no, you really can't be. And you can't be the person that's get going on it. But now so that So once, once just... that dude started hitting that tree, it encouraged all of us to include the people who did not think that that would be possible to start working on that tree. Yeah. And three hours later... We got that tree totally unstuck. We didn't use a fire department, nothing. It was just, we had yeah. like three or four chainsaws running. That that guy down the road. Well, these people were inundated <laughs> also with emergencies and problems. They couldn't help us. Oh, goodness, no. No, and, and anybody who thinks otherwise in no, any in any no location, way. it's, I mean, every, I think every anybody who's watching this probably is savvy enough. They probably own guns and they're mildly prepared minds, uh, and they and they know these lessons because it's like you look at like Katrina and any kind of general disaster. Yeah. There's the the normal amount. It's funny because the amount of <coughs> emergency res, uh, support and all that that they have out there is enough for normal times. For the most <laughs> basic Maybe. times, for the most basic times, that's Maybe, how much yeah. they got. Forget about during a disaster. Yeah. And so they don't have anything for that. So eventually, you know, people from way surrounding areas that weren't affected, maybe they send, you know, yeah. they, they kind of build a thing. But that's that's way after the fact. Well, getting back to uh, a couple of things that we talked last time about. Okay. I I, I just, uh, I wasn't thinking about it much yesterday because you're preoccupied with what to do with the storm. I didn't even know if we were going to leave the house or not. It got to a point where I had to make a decision. Yeah. I decided to stay with the house, and then it went right around us, and thank God for that. But but um, I did think about the, uh, the fact that we have touched on, and I think if you've seen our last sun Saturday's blog recording, we touched on the, the vision that's needed in the area, and... Somebody came on uh, Facebook, some other guy was commenting on something else totally different and made a statement that I thought was interesting. And I've come to the conclusion that there are some things, like we said for the babies in Christ, they need that initial, yeah, well, what do you call it, organized, not organized religion, but they need something a little more basic and constant. Uh, for them to go to it as babes, but I would call it safe. Yeah, safer places. But when you get older, when you get more experienced, especially when you become seasoned, you learn to pull yourself away from that. And th the insecurity that people get when they pull away from it. My wife pulled away from the Roman Catholic Church when she got filled with spirit, and it was so insecure for her to do it because so ingrained is this. You can't leave that house of worship, that house. You can't leave that house or that group. And and so it was a very difficult 
uh, exercise because she felt a little bit of shame. She felt like, yeah, maybe this isn't right or good or who am I? And that it could even feel heretical, huh? It could feel heretical. Yeah, uh, uh, she kind of felt like a, a traitor to the yeah to the house of worship kind of thing, and and so. But the, the interesting thing about this is, I think, well, if we get a hold of this, is that I and I said this to you before, it's for freedom that we're set free. Yeah. When we're set free, it doesn't mean that things stop. It just means that you're doing them and you're free. You're not bound. You're not hung up by it. You're not. You know, we we still enjoy our church that we go to. We enjoy that. But we're not. That's not a hang up for us. We're we moved on with other things and and we're free to do what the Lord wants us to do besides doing that. I mean, we, we, you never, some people need a nursery because they're babes. But later on when they get freedom and they understand, oh, I don't have to make that. I don't have to do that. You know, I know a person right now in the church right now is scared to death not to take communion. <laughs> I'm like, you, you've been such free. This is not a bondage thing. This is no. not keep the rules, you know. And, and so we, we ran into a little bit of that uh, last week. And so we're we're kind of like tasked. There's this the video or whatever, um, just the first one. Although you, one really has to watch all seven of them, maybe not all seven, but there's certain ones that you, one should really watch. But um, we we talked a little bit about this. I will tell you, I did an immense amount of research since then, and it has only emboldened me. But I will say, um, <laughs> emboldened me. I. I have to be somewhat careful because <clears throat> I do understand like the notion of like biases and I guess you can call them like personal convictions or, or things in which like, I know for a fact, my um, it's so funny just thinking about this. all this stuff just kind of flood back, like back in high school, I was the kind of person who had a 14 inch Mohawk who was leading the way in punk in, in my high school who had like, spiked leather jackets and like all this kind of stuff but meanwhile i had a u.s flag patch on my jacket and so people thought i was crazy to join the military they're like aren't you like anti-government and all this i'm like i want to fly fighter jets i don't know what you would uh, don't understand about that i get i get that they could not understand why because i'm a more I, i'm a, i'm a complex person but it didn't it was not um it was not uh um I was not confused about this, but where I'm trying to go with this is from even all the way back then, I've been a very, probably all the way since I've been born, just ask my parents, I'm a very non-authority person. And what it, it, what it really means is sometimes I will, and I will call it inappropriately, dip into anti-rules versus as I've matured, it's more like I will choose the rules and or I will I will willingly adopt rules based on the merit of the rules and not who's telling me the rules. Like that's just that's how I actually operate. And now because I understand this, I'm trying to be a little bit more mature about it, a little bit more cautious to not just apply that willy nilly on all things. Yeah. But what I will tell you, it's a lot of context to build up to. We started getting into depth about. Uh, Because this is about the early church and what you should be doing at church. What is church, right? And I went back to reading like the Apostolic Fathers and reading all the stuff that was actually the, you undoubtedly the actual foundational material for the big churches. And upon reading, like, John, okay. You've read the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? And so you read it, and it's an amazing document. But then you start reading the... Have you, You've read the Apostolic Fathers, right? Well, I had to take in school, too. Of course. So the moment I started reading it, it was like... <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think so. They're just They started saying these things where it's like, dude, there's nowhere in the New Testament that there's any talk like this. This is you guys doing your own thing. There's there's all this good floweriness. Okay, I will take that. But then there's these things that they're putting in there. And it's like, this is devious behavior. Because like all of a sudden it was like <laughs> 30 years, uh, maybe 20 years of like anti-establishment arguments were like just coming straight to the forebrain. And I'm like, who could, act, who on planet Earth could possibly read this 
and accept this. And you're like, well, babes. That, there's that, there's babes, and then there's people who don't think that it's possible that a leader, a leader, uh, I'm not, they're not a leader, they're actually a manipulator, is going to do things like tell you to do something because of their title. And they did it multiple times in there. Yeah. They're like, I'm the bishop. And not only am I the bishop, I'm the bishop of Rome. You will listen oh. to the bishop of Rome. Yeah. Bro, I don't think so. I don't know who you think you are. But if you had any leadership credibility, you would be leaning on the fact, it would be like you read Paul. So you read Paul, then you compare to episodic followers. You're like, dude, you guys are so far away from Paul. And I'm not like, I'm not going to, you know, prostrate myself to Paul by any stretch of the imagination, but I have actually a way heartier respect for Paul. Oh, yeah. He, he tried to get people to do things based on him doing things for them. Like, yeah. Jesus did these things for you. I've come over there and I've helped you. Like, those are leadership things. That's real. The moment you start going, I'm leaning on this structure and you're going to do that. Then I started reading, oh man, dude. Um, then I started reading on all of the I can't remember what it's called. The the various councils that they basically started that they're still doing the councils every whatever years or whatever. Yeah. And I started reading those. And the first things they came out with, like, who could possibly believe this nonsense? The first things that they came out with was they said that they are infallible. Dude, you are you're totally insane. You are absolutely <laughs> not infallible. And then uh, I can't remember what the other one is. Um I can't remember. They they basically declared themselves God. And then I started reading about it. Oh, this is this is 300 AD and beyond when it was adopted yeah. by the Roman Empire by the emperors themselves. Yeah. Who could possibly accept any of that? Yeah. Well, when we were in school getting this, getting some of this. We were told something that one professor said to us that I loved that made all the difference in the world. He said I, I was in a place where we had this big set of rules, a whole big set of rules. And it was actually like a camp for young people. Okay. And they had all these rules that you had to abide by as a, as a counselor. And all these rules. And then he said, now this guy here, he's been with us for for uh, 10 years. He knows how to get around the camp and what to do in the camp and everything. He's got it together. If you got a question or anything, see him. Yeah. And so w one guy went over to see him and said, Hey, you know, with all these rules, I haven't read these rules yet. What what do you think? How do I go about this? And he said, just whatever, and this is what Paul said in his scripture, whatever you've heard and seen in me, do. And the guy said, what? He said, that's right. If you, Whatever you've heard of me and seen me do, you do. Mm. He said, I don't have to read the rules. He goes, I, I'm 10 years here and I haven't read the rules. Because the difference between rules yes. and guides are two different things. There are some things that will guide you through life, examples and people doing it. Those are your guides. You don't need the rule. If you if you if you go just stick strictly by the rules, yeah, you're really not a you're not comprehending what's going on here because that's just rules. And so, well, it actually sa it says in it says in the uh, I can't remember. I think it's in the new. Te it has to be in the New Testament. It says the the rules are for the evil. Well, not exactly that way, but it's it's trying to get across the point. I heard a guy say, too, something. That, this will blow your mind, but this is a whole other teaching about this. But orphans, people without dads and moms, without... Definitely when I say it could be interpreted in many different ways, but yeah. Yeah, people that are orphans love rules and obedience, but they don't want to get to know you. Sure. They don't want to get to know you. If they have to get to know you, well, then they'll change because you're this way, so I should be this way. Well, rules are boundaries. And They're, boundaries allow and you they to... They love those rules. This is one of the things where um, I, I have a hard time... We, we, we don't have enough time in this individual podcast to go into these various things, but there's certain... I'm a very difficult person to lead. And the reason why, it's taken me a long time to figure out why this is. You have to be, <laughs> you have to be more capable than me in any particular given thing. And I'm very acutely aware of somebody's skills in something. I'm becoming more aware into that same regard of people's skills that I don't acknowledge or skills that are actually skills. So that would be like yeah. some, some of our friends that we know out there that are, their, their ability to do peace way beyond my abilities to do that. And I have a lot of immense amount of respect for it. But I've also kind of trusted myself that at some point in time, it will click to me that they've got that going on. And 
I will have that. But I'm very, I don't just listen to anyone. Yeah. By any stretch. Well, th- the point what he was making yeah. was with his rules and stuff is is they're they're big on obedience, but not on relationship. So we were talking about this relationship yeah. that's so important with getting together, you know, that fellowshipping and that stuff that you do with the other group and stuff. These are more important than the rules than it just o- just just obedience because there are people obeying things that are erroneous and stupid. I mean, no offense, but they are. And so what happens is an orphan says, if I do obey every rule and ob- just obey, 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 you have to give me my place. And and the father said to the elder brother, when the prodigal son came back, the elder brother complained, you gave him a ring and a cloak and you put a party for him. Yeah. And the father said, you were with me all this time and you didn't get to know me. He was an orphan in his own dad's house because he he, he kept the rules. He did everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept yeah. all the rules, but I'm he didn't, what you're he didn't now. connect with dad. He just had no connection because he wasn't interested in the relationship with dad. He was interested in uh, when dad dies, I get the farm, basically. <laughs> I, what you, uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because you're right. That is that is a major part of the prodigal son. It's so funny. The, there's, the, the, there's this whole other half to the prodigal son which is the son that didn't leave. The son that didn't leave was an orphan. And people think it's mostly about the radical son who did leave and then was saved and came back, which that is a major component of yeah. Christianity and redemption. But it is not just that because it's like, you were with me, but you knew me not. You knew me not. Henry Nowen, a guy, a great writer, wrote about the prodigal son and everything. It's the unbelievable book it just blew. when you're done with that book you're you got to take a week just to muse about it but here's another thing that happens is when those fathers they got away from conviction and started to deal with preference so i said i i i okay. uh, i uh explain or describe conviction and preference this way if i hold a gun to your head and said say jesus is lord you'll do it out of preference you don't want to get shot yeah in fact it will reveal your conviction. So a lot of times they did that to put the gun up to see if they really had a conviction about it. And if they said, shoot me, they knew it was a conviction. If they said, no, don't shoot me. Okay, Jesus Lord. Oh, 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 it's just a preference for you because you don't want a bullet in your head. So the difference between conviction and preference was what happened. The father's got this idea, let's do this thing and that'll be religious and that'll be a good thing. And it became a preference, but it's not true. It's not like it's not true. Talking. And so what happens is, is that people went along with preference until the one like Martin Luther said, no, I have a uh, conviction. I don't, I don't. I have a conviction to read the Bible for myself. And when he did that, he died for that. I don't like the word, um, not to get all nitpicky. I don't like the word preference here. There's some other word here, but it, it's captured. In a lot of ways, what you described, it, it, it's it's captured because I'm thinking of how that applies to some people I know, and they are fearful not to do the thing, which is kind of like a rule. You don't want to get hit by the rule. Which is what I talked about with people leaving. They have trouble not doing it. They feel like they 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 wrong. also feel like they've got to they've got to do a certain thing in a certain way or else. Or else. And the else could be I don't feel like I'm doing the thing. Dude, that's not that's that's or peer pressure. That's gets not rejected. convicted. Yeah. Convicted is the right word, and I will now step back and say my nature. It's it's in that conviction or beyond because I have no choice when somebody who's an authority says something like, "Do it because I'm the authority." I'm going to go. I'm now thankful you gave your hand away because you're absolutely not a person who should be listened to. Did you tip your hat there, buddy? <laughs> definitely, definitely tip the hat. The um, there, there's, there's so much that was in those writings and in those documents. Like they're literally aligning themselves to build an organization to control people. That's well, madness. You know, it's not conviction. No, it's not conviction because these people. I don't know if they even had a conviction. Some of these people d- that made these rules and ideas and stuff, I don't think it was out of conviction at all. I think it was out of, uh, well, maybe peer pressure, maybe just I believe, ego and wanting, I, to, wanting I believe to be in charge. anybody who tells you to believe in them because of the, of, of the organizational thing, they too have that same belief that they must do it because of some other person that's up the chain who's going to tap them. I wrote, I wrote an article about this. I guess I'm at the point now where I'm going to start saying all these controversial things. They're not intended to be controversial by any stretch. 
I don't need any more controversy in my life, but um, <laughs> especially, I'm not trying. I'm I'm really actually trying to dial it back because I'm not trying to be controversial with any of my friends. I'm not trying to poke. Yeah, them. sure, sure, sure. I'm, I'm not. But <laughs> one of the things that I'll say though, I did this writing because I was about to pop thinking about this stuff that I would never follow God because He's God. I know a lot of people say that stuff and they use that as a justification to follow God. But I think it's the same thing we're talking about here. You, it, like if you go that route, you are going to overlook all of the goodness and the majesty that has actually happened. And that's the reason to follow God. It has nothing to do because he's God. Because if, 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 if God was the kind of person that was only that, then he should be completely and totally rejected. But that is not who God is. So that is not the way. That is not how Jesus presented himself. Jesus never commanded anybody to believe in him because of his title. Never. He did it because of the truth of his word and his behavior. They, which they which say is who he is. Because they could never have called him the blameless person if he was able to be blamed. So there's a two part there. There's both what he's saying, because he's saying as a teacher to teach and hey, Follow me. I'll make your, you know, that's kind of a leadership call. And then I'm going to show you how to do things. So he's being weighed by his words and by his actions. That is why people follow Jesus and have been convicted to follow Jesus and not going, I'm going to follow Jesus because otherwise I go to hell. You're already going to hell. <laughs> You're absolutely already going to hell with that. It's nonsense. Like, it, it, the, you're totally right, well, you're getting You're getting close to the, the edge of... of controversial religious bullets because yeah, and it's not my intent but it no, is no no it, i know because yeah. because we we get ourselves but you know followers of jesus you know there's a scripture in acts that says and they were called christians at that time the word there is not christians like we know it it was like these people are think they're christ's mm. It, the, the 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 comment was more like an adjective noun i know it's weird but it, it, they're trying to say these people think they're god you know they and so they call them christians cuz everybody knew in jewish time what a christ was he was a messiah a mm. christ was an anointed one christians that's a good way to say that word it's called christians yeah, yeah christian yeah. so what happens is is when we rise well actually we don't rise up and say we're this or that and you should connect with it Jesus, Paul, us have to go by example. What you see, hear, see, me do, you do. Yeah, I like I, that. I'm an example. I, I'm just an example. I'm not like king or queen or whatever, queen for the day or king. I, I, I'm not I'm not the rule giver. It's interesting, you know, I, I, I've done a whole study on this, so I, I'll just interject this, that when the perfect place of Adam and Eve was in the garden and everything was wonderful and beautiful, Brand new creation. And he was naming the 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 animals. Why he called one an elephant, one a giraffe. Who knows? Nobody knows. But there he was. And then God said, by the way, just don't touch or eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Tree of knowledge. To know what's good and bad. Don't touch that. That will cause you to die. That's interesting. I could do a lot of whole teaching on that. There's definitely a lot to think about. But somebody asked, well, why, if it was a wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous, sunny, wonderful garden day and they're naked and not ashamed and everything is cool, why did he put a law in the middle of the garden? Why did he put that, don't, but, but, but that tree, don't touch or eat? Everything else was free for that. They were free as a bird in a golden sky. They were, they were just free. And, they, and then they get, the, why did they get that law? And I say, now, now everybody agrees with this, but I say, if there's a rule in the Garden of Freedom, which it was, mm. it was to to say, I need to know the lawgiver. I need to find out he's in charge and don't touch that or we'll die. We got to seek who that guy is because he's a great. That was a, a like an invitation to seek him out. That's what it was. It wasn't to keep a rule. Mm. Yes, they had disobeyed the rule and they paid for it. I get that. But that was not why God put it in there. Oh, I'm going to get you now. I'll put that tree in there and you'll yeah. eat that and I'll get you. It wasn't trying to get him. He was saying, look it, find out why that lawgiver gave a law. Find out. Because I, I came around, talked with you in the cool of the day. Let's start seeking the lawgiver. Let's start seeking who it is that made the rules of nature and the rules of the earth. The things that happened, they happened 
there's a natural law and all this stuff, but who is this giver? And that's why he put it in there. Not to catch him. Not to ru- God, you ruined the- everything was beautiful if you didn't put that rule in there. They they did a sermon, I I'm sure you're probably at church a couple weeks ago, where they said um um to this point that the devil tempts and God tests. And I think it's a really it's a it's a very good understanding yeah. of how it works. That if if it's something that feels tempting, that's not that's not a God thing. Yeah. God is a testing thing. You can that's a principle you could go with. I mean that pretty much it holds true. Except when there's a certain a couple areas about tempting in the Bible what God did, but it wasn't tempting for evil. But a, you get you get the point. I mean there's something yeah, more yeah, on more, but, tests, but it, it's a pretty safe understanding. And I think of, that's yeah, and I think that's why. I mean, it was his people. Mm-hmm. It was Adam and Eve were his. Creation was beautiful, the garden and everything. You put a law in there. Thanks a lot, God. He I mean, think, do- think about it in, in this context, right? I don't need to go too far in it, but they, he put the tree there not to tempt them to go eat it, but to, if, it, if anything, to test them not to do it. Well, to test them to say, what are you going to do about the fact that there's a law here that will cause your death? Mm. Are you going to seek into that, or are you just going to... Ex- you don't just... Nobody free just accepts it. Mm. They go, mm, there's something to I would it. agree. I would t- I would completely agree. One of the things I was going to say earlier that, again, just another nature that I found about myself, about how I will and will not respect somebody in some regard. I yeah. have a very hard time actually respecting people who are good, who are just good natured. <laughs> and the reason is, is because they do not have the strength to resist temptation. They don't, that's never actually what's happened to them. So they are not an authority. To, they are not an authority to good to me. Not as strong as they appear. <clears throat> no, they're not. So they're never authority to good to me because they have never actually had experience. It's kind of like, uh, it's this, It's a similar thing to, I'm not going to listen to a person um, about the evils of alcohol who has not been like an alcoholic. You listen <laughs> to a person who's an alcoholic, You're they've, they've been through something, they've walked in the path of evil They've turned away from that, and then they have the the strength yeah. and the determination and the conviction to walk away from it. Other people, they're just so far away from it that yeah. they they do that. And and while that's good, I'm just not going to respect them for doing that. That's like again, it's part of like their just general nature to to step away. You're never going to be able to minister to me or somebody else yeah, about these true. various things. And I've walked in some very shadowy paths many, many times. And I've walked with other well, people who've been walking on those paths. Well, let's look at the, the history of God choosing people. Moses killed an Egyptian. David killed, uh, 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 I forgot his name, Bathsheba's husband. Yeah. And and on it goes, Paul killed Christians. And on it goes, God using messed up people that it says they honored God and their heart was after God. That meant yes. everything to him. Not they kept all the rules. They decided to keep all the rules, and everything is hunky dory now. Give me a break. So I'm, here's controversy number three. I'm gonna bring. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up. Became convicted of. I was studying. So in um, in the first of that video that I sent you, uh, he eventually shows like, hey, um, these are the passages within the New Testament that I studied. You know, I basically went through the whole thing and found everything that relates to the church. And then here's all the passages. So I went through them and I read every single one of them and I took notes on every single one. I, I It was kind of like the proverbial Spanglish where I'm like sort of scripture, sort of me replying and summarizing <laughs> it. So there's a little bit of that and intermixed. And when I got done with that, <clears throat> which is a great exercise, uh, I again, I will say that I think Paul is a great person to follow, but he is not Jesus. Oh. I'm just perfectly convicted on it because people think like Paul is scripture must do what Paul says. I don't think so, but I do believe, cause again, this goes back to the moment you go Oh, he's God in his scripture. He's infallible. No, Paul is absolutely fallible, but I trust that what he is doing is trying to build people up. Cause that's what he says again and again and again and again. I believe that in that process of doing it, there was a couple passages that were wickedly difficult to understand. They were very difficult. And so I flipped through numerous, like five different versions of the Bible to try to eventually get to it. It was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And there is a section that he talks about with what the church is supposed to do that is so important that, so important that people have got to hear this. It is more important to get the 
the the uh, to create clear understanding in the other person than it is to say obscure crap. Because saying the obscure thing, which he talks about in tongues, that speaking in tongues is okay, but it's norm without a translator of the speaking in tongues, it's more of your own individual experience with God. Mm -hmm. So when you're with a group of people, it, it what is better is to relay information to the other person. Mm -hmm. From that, I become convicted that I am going to actually go get the Bibles on the far end of the other side of the spectrum that are more about creating clarity than they are relaying the scripture perfectly. I have that. I, I like that. But the problem with it is, is what I ran into, there's some passages, and I consider myself pretty astute, uh, astute reader, but when I read a more understood version of it, Dude, I, I, it was completely different than how I was reading it. Mm -hmm. I was reading it very confused. And long story short, it is super important, and I've, I've heard this before, but I, it, I now understand this, to create clear messages for other people as a leader to get them to do things because that is okay. how they actually will understand. And yeah. so it is better to create clarity than it is to oh, speak in tongues. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, there are a lot of things in Christian... Christianity, Christendom, that are I hundred percent I do not agree with Calvin. Oh sure, I don't agree with him, but he was a great guy, great man of God. He was after the Lord. He was after God, but he had a couple of uh, wayward things that he in his life, and he went this way and made a conclusion. So when you study these things, I'll jump out of that to say this: when you study these people in these different texts, which I've done, yeah, I want to give you a suggestion to the group, to you, to everybody. Yeah. The number one most important thing to me is the Greek interlinear Bible. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because it goes English to Greek, but you read it, if you just read just the interpretation, it follows a path of understanding and, and the way to say something. Like they don't say Joe walked over there. It was in walking he arrived to, well, that's a different way of saying it. So yeah. that when when you read it in interlinear Greek interlinear or Hebrew interlinear, you you get kind of the gist of actually what the Greek was saying. It's Be actually critically important because they will they have to make a they have to make a decision on what word, especially on like an NASB. Yeah. They have to decide what word they're going to use to try to to match it, and it's not perfect. And I've now confirmed after going through that. I looked through. Oh, you can't. It's I was looking through all the Greek and go. Oh, this is actually a different one. Like the, the word worship here is definitely different than the one that's over here. Yeah. My concern now, to your point, reading those apostolic fathers, after reading some of the stuff, some of the translations. Um, and then seeing different ones, uh, I'd really like to see other translations of Epistolic Fathers because <clears throat> in, one, in, in multiple editions of the Bible, it was saying that Paul was telling them, see, this is the one that was like, one of them is really difficult to read, was telling them, believe in me because I have been given authority over like, over this, like I am the authority whatever, but it's just not what it was saying. What it was actually was saying was forgive us for burdening you because we, we know many things. That's very different. Yeah, it's different. <clears throat> and, and he was not trying to draw attention to himself. He's trying to say, there's another scripture that says, be imitators of me as I am of the Lord, only of the Lord. If I'm yeah. imitating the Lord, if I'm obeying him, that you can be okay with that. I'm okay with that. If he says that, because if I am, imitating the Lord and acting like Jesus. I want people to see that and go, yeah, I want to act that way too. So it's not like an authority gesture. It's more of an example. Gesture. Yes, I would agree. Gesture. And that's important to uh, understand. <coughs> you know, talking about this and thinking while we're talking, I'm saying to myself, anybody that pays attention has got to be thinking. Now, now, some of you might not be thinking all these things because leadership, I mean, Mike's leader, <coughs> leadership and his book on leadership and, and the stuff he's talking about leadership, I didn't talk about that. I kind of lived it. You yes. Know? And so I have the I have the experience of living through that. And actually, I bumbled my way through. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, of, course, I had to, of course, people do. Later on, I thought, well, that was good. And then I found out, well, that was not so good. <laughs> That's why I wrote that book because it's like it's like the cheat codes. Like this is actually the framework of how it actually works. 
So people, without knowing it, they're doing these things, but then they will do these other things. Yeah. It's like the proverbial sins you don't realize are happening because no one gave you the manual on leadership. Yeah. So so technically, what you cheat codes, guidelines will help you get through. Rules don't always cut the mustard. They just don't, you know, rules are rules. They're great, but guidelines are better. Yes. I mean, again, I, I would say like I've come in the last couple of years that certain kinds of rules out there. We're not talking about, you know, don't murder and this kind of stuff. We're talking about some other more nuanced things oh, wait, that wait. I have become convicted to follow those rules because I believe wholeheartedly in those rules yeah. from experience. But when different from me than other people, I don't see the rules like people see the rules. I see the rules as almost like guidelines. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm going to go violate them, but the nature of that... This is really critical to understand that bad things happen when you do that. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do that. Yep. And so I'm going to try to not do that as and, much as I can. And I don't want—I wasn't going to say this, but I'll just to blow your mind, if we read the Ten Commandments, like actually ten promises, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. He's really making a statement there. Well, back then he meant don't cover your neighbor's wife. Okay, that's a rule. Okay, we can't do that. But Really, the statement is, when you're like me, when you've accepted me, you sh you could put, will not covet your neighbor's wife. See, you, you shall not because you're different being with me than you were. It's not a rule. It's not the Ten Commandments, the Ten Rules. It's the Ten Promises. Well, I mean, in the Hebrew, it's actually the Ten Sayings. It's definitely not commandments. That's mitzvah. That well, is not commandments what it is. is another. I, I'm saying this for them because they don't know. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just we, like we, being very we, accurate. Read, yeah, when you look at the actual sayings. Hebrew, it is not commandments. But, it, but it's ten promises, though. The I can say, understand that. The sayings are promises. Yeah. You won't do this. You won't kill. You won't do. You won't lie. You won't have false images because you don't wanna. Yeah, I agree. Hello? I, t I totally agree. You know, and and so we see that, and we got a churches now. They got the Ten Commandments stamped on their church. You better we'll watch to see if you do them. Well, how are you going to watch to see if I covet or not? That's right. Good luck on that one. Yeah, because I'm coveting right now, but you don't know it. I mean, this is why this is this is why this is why the temple the 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 temple of the body is so important. Yeah, that that is what Back that is. Again, to we are <laughs> we are his, and he wants us to be his, and he does a lot for us. But if we go off on our own, then we got to have rules, regulations, things oh that keep goodness, us in man. check. There's so many things I was reading that were just oh, yeah, so painful to read that they're it's so to me it's so obvious that these people are doing things because they believe in the organization. They're just saying like the organization and that's just nonsense. Do you remember anywhere in the New Testament can, can you even name an organization in the New or the Old Testament, even one? Not off the top of my head. I don't think I can... Pharisees, maybe? You could maybe kind of say that. You know, Sanhedrin, that's kind yeah, of an organization. Yeah, there more beliefs. One was but, resurrection, one yeah, was but, non but you, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's no organizations even there. So then to turn around and say, oh, no, these organizations. Like, dude, you're so far off from reality. Yeah. You're not leading people. You're basically a stooge for an organization. Well, Jewish people had their organization of all kinds. of 634 different laws from the Jewish religion, Jewish people. Sure. I mean, they were organized in that they were, did that, and they were hypocrites. They weren't even close to doing those rules. They had ways to get around them. Well, that's uh, that I would I would borderline say that's actually the world we live in right now. That literally there's this pretend government in Washington that is just creating all these rules. And of course, it's so it's so absurd. We'll look back at this and just see how totally insane this world is. They're yeah. literally creating <laughs> like in the past they would create uh, if they created a new new rule or new law, it would be measured in paragraphs, like individual like two three paragraphs. Yeah. And that would be it. That's all there was. They're now throwing out thousands of pages. Yeah. And so thousands and thousands. And they're just willy-nilly throwing thousands of pages in there that they're creating all oh, these rules Just accept and those things and then we'll see what's in it after we get them accepted. Uh, that, that has been a meme for a long time now. And so by saying that, it's like, well, now they basically have built, they're continuing to build this framework that everybody's violating the law all the time. It's the same thing there. So no one can follow that law. So it actually doesn't make any sense. Now, they, to, to give them some credit, in the past, when you're creating these paragraphs, you, 
they're they're just getting so inane with the the bureaucracy and that's what it is it's a bureaucracy anybody could have predicted who is reasonable could predict that it was going to eventually come to this but that's not that's not the way that's not the way no. by any stretch of the imagination no the way is 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 getting getting that vision and and carrying it and and becoming convicted and yep. and moving down and hearing it i see it now then you go after it. Yeah. That's how it works. It is how it works. And I would definitely say fear. That one is one I'm becoming, I'm trying to tune more and more to when, are you doing this out of fear? Because doing out of fear um, versus like, oh, sometimes man. you're reactive and you got to respond to things and, and it can rattle you a bit. Like, you know, there's six inches of water in my basement, but I'm not fearing it. But it's different when people are like, oh, I must do this, otherwise. And it's like, just once you start talking like that, you're not actually making freedom decisions. What you should be doing in cases like that, where you could say that, you take a step back and go, therefore, I'm going to you know, fix this situation yeah. by doing this, this, and this to build this kind of foundation where that's going over here. Yeah. <laughs> but well, people, people don't do that. Fear-based stuff is everywhere. And I keep saying this to, to my wife and to Liz and everybody that knows me. If When they say, this is this, this is going to happen, they're going to do this. I go, is it fear-based or faith-based? Yeah, that's right. Do you believe in it? Is it a belief or is it just you're afraid? Yeah, they have, they have no idea. And I, 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 they always say, well, why don't you go for that? Because it's fear-based. I'm not going fear-based. Well, it's a good point. I made this other controversial statement on Facebook about... I didn't make it. Somebody, you know, somebody posted like a meme, and I threw it out there, knowing that everybody on my Facebook is going to give me hate. That was just more or less just downplaying the amount of conspiracy theories stuff out there. That <laughs> I, I, I'm not ignorant enough to to say that there's no conspiracies, but to say that the ludicrousness of like, I just got to have a call out for ju judgment, judgment. It's the same thing with like why people, the people who are good, I don't listen to. Because they do not have any judgment. That every time they're like good or bad, tell me this is good or bad. The moment you start doing that, you have no, you have no ability, no skills, no muscles to determine judgment. And one of the things that you need to have is facts. You have to have facts. And if there's things out there that you do not have facts on, you need to be cautious about having any much, too much view into it, and then being, you know, so attached to it. That's why people are. The Bible says, tossed to and fro by every wind. That's right. Of idea. They just, what is it now? What cloud are you following now? You're all over the place. And and if you, if you don't have anything that, that you can depend upon, you're going to be all over the place. You know, the Bible, there's a old song that says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, it's a great one. It's it's a great one. And it's true. And, it's, and so I will say, the whoever's watching this thing, if God, I ever... God help you. If, if I ever... <laughs> Try to say to appeal to you by saying whatever my title is, which it's so funny. My, it's, John, it's so ridiculous. I'm a kind of person that creates organizations, and so I'm I I have this other viewpoint. Even when I went and did my MBA, I could see it in all the people there that they no one ever thinks like an owner. They always think like a manager or an employee, and so they never think about a person who like actually created the thing and has the freedom of movement on it where it's like, I'll just close this thing. I don't care. Or I'll go do something else. Or I want this to be this way. And I don't really care what you say. Like those kinds of feelings don't come from inside the organization. So people inside the organization never come to the conclusion that they should close the organization because they benefit from it. Sometimes owners don't realize that either, but they have like, like if you're a business owner, at some point you want to get rid of the business and go and sell it and get it off your plate because it feels like a yoke around your neck. None of the employees feel like that. And so I mention this because the kinds of things that people are coming to and they're coming with in these ideas, they're not, they're not a whole view of things. And I, and just you know, start your own company just so you gain some, you know, just selling freaking lemonade on the side of the road so that you can eventually stare down the directors of major large companies and you realize dude that guy's hollow 
<laughs> they have no conviction of the real world, and they have only fear because yeah. they're fearing for their job. They have no no real skills, which has, which applies to leadership. And that you know you you've got to, we talked about some of these things. Leaders get a hold of what's going on, not just their own little world, not yeah, just their right. own little thing. They get a hold of that stuff, and then they start thinking, and and they start putting two and two together. That's where you become a leader. You can't, yes. you're, if you're a follower, you in, don't bother with that. You don't, you don't want to do that because I just want to follow. I just want to. And, and, and to that point, it's independent of someone telling you it. Yeah. And that's critical because then you have conviction and you can step out because the conviction isn't built on somebody telling you because the moment that you're no longer underneath the weight of that rule or edict, you won't do it. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do in your free time? What are you going to do, you know, when you're resting? Are you going to get out of your, you know, I am not going to do this and I'm going to I'm going to now go do that. That kind of conviction does not come from listening to people. Mm -hmm. Amen. It does not it's not waiting in your house waiting somebody will rescue us. <laughs> you hope. Yeah, you, you you hope against hope. You hope. And the world is going to, everything the world is doing is making you have less hope. Yep. And well, hope yeah, hope comes internal and goes out. And should, hope should then turn into action. should yeah. turn into faith and should turn into action. Hope is the groundwork of faith. If you don't have hope. Yeah. I, I did learn this from a person in LDS. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. They, they, I, mentioned, I mentioned like something like I was expressing uh, an admiration for faith. And he's like, well, you know what you need to have for faith? And I was like, what's that? And he said, hope. I was like, oh, man, that's good. Hope is the groundwork of faith. If you got no hope, people that lose hope do nothing. They don't do anything in faith. Fear, yeah. they might do something in fear. But there's no faith base if there's no hope. It's mm. not going to happen. Yeah. Why do you yet hope for it, the Bible says? I mean, if you don't hope, you're not going to believe I'm sorry. But. So if Amazon can finally get through all this mud, because they were supposed to deliver a bunch of stuff through the raging waters, and they said, "Oh really?" <laughs> they said that our front door was not available. Yeah. <laughs> it was not made available. It's like, well, sure, if you want to call the highway leading to our house, it's not available. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in there, I've I've got my my new Bible coming, which is the most heretical Bible. What one? The Message. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I read that all the time. I don't use it as study, but I read it all the time. Sure, I understand. It, I, I'm it's actually. Got, it's got a phraseology that is a little more in the vernacular to what we do, what we say. You know? Yeah. So people get it. Whereas um, I, I wouldn't study from it, but I would read it. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I could see um, reading it to gain th the the meaning, yeah, and but, then pulling uh, pulling back, and maybe going. You go yeah. back to like an NASB. You're kind of tying it there, and then you go from an NASB down to the the actual yeah. like Greek. And I'm I'm not going to say Hebrew anymore because unless somebody can convince me and like show me some documentation, as far as I'm concerned, the Hebrew any of the Hebrew came from the Greek. From what well, I've to seen. some degree, it's just that the you know the Old Testament they say is Hebrew based because you know it was put together by Hebrews. Yeah, and, but they spoke they spoke and Greek, he, but, and that and it came after the Greek. The Greek Old Testament, the Septuagint. All of the translations came after that. Yeah. So, so I mean. So it has its Greek. Greek has its uh, influence. Now, what was interesting? I don't know if I mentioned this last time. It was a really good argument for looking at uh, becoming more savvy in the Greek. The Septuagint is super interesting as a study tool to actually go understand the Old Testament better because when you have the Septuagint, you can take the words from the New Testament. And then link them back to their meanings back yeah. in the Old Testament, yeah. because each obviously each one of these words is chosen for a particular reason, yeah. and it's not by accident. And then you can yeah. trace it back. So then, when you read such and such worshipped, and yeah. you know back in David, and then they say that in New Testament, you can actually link it to to have a greater understanding of those words. What well, one day, Lord willing, I'll. But this Greek in a linear and Hebrew in a linear kind of does that for you it, you don't have to buy the book it's online it's free you got to know how to get there i know how to get there but yeah but they've it, got they've got a couple of them it does get you to the understanding of what it's saying oh here's one that i found from doing that 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 thing i want to know what hell is in the old testament and so people say she'll nope stop it's grave 
So if you pick up the NASB and you say in the grave, it's actually the same word that they use for hell in the New Testament. Yeah, and there's some people that are saying that they that the word grave there, and when they use grave, when they use hell, it's the same thing. It's from the same root. But it's interesting because there's a scripture that says that the grave doesn't quench. It can't be quenched. Once you're in the grave, that's it. And they call that a hell. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, I can buy that. But when they say... Uh, the fire of hell or the, uh, you know, I don't get into all this because it's really deep. When people yeah. start defining certain words that they haven't studied on, they get confused. And I don't want anybody to get confused. But uh, I met I met an old Spaniard uh, preacher who said, God is God, man is man, and hell is hell. <laughs> That's funny. And he just left I, it at that. I mean, and I said, I think that's enough for me. God is God, man is man, and hell is hell. That's it. You want to define hell and what the details are? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You can bring it right down to a, some of these deconstructionists are saying there is no hell. Okay, but Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. How do you explain that? You know, there's reasons why. Mm. And I can't get into that. It's a whole other teaching. Yeah, I, you know, thinking about, okay, well, what's the purpose of all this? I always came at this one, like one of the main thing was, what does the thing actually say? That's always been one of my things because, again, I want to know, like, yeah. the actual thing. Less because I'm I'm so worried about believing the wrong thing. That's not what's happening here. Um, I don't have belief in individual micro facts. That's not what's happening. But what I was always interested in is things like, for example, why is there no Satan in the Old Testament? There is. And the problem is, is depending on, like, what app you have, if you type, okay, I'm going to type Satan, find me every location in the Bible— you're not going to see it in you're not going to see it in the Old Testament. You might you'll see a little bit in Job, couple, but that's actually not true. Uh, the Hebrew is Shatah, and you search that, and it's all over the Old Testament. And uh, I found that because when I went and found the Greek now you're for it, you then see that that's what it is. It's you know it's like and sometimes you know it's. Diablos or it's whatever because again you got to look at what the actual word which one the word is and then you go and you take that and you look at the Old Testament it's, it's all over the place no. but you don't see that because it's not translated that no, way no because the translators didn't want to do that but, basically they didn't want to do that yes and the King James guys no, they didn't they didn't want to do that either King that's James why, guys don't want to read the Bible no, <laughs> well that, that's they, why they, they want to preach and throw their a book interpretation at you. the way they did it was because of the way the king wanted it and the problem is, is that if the, you know, this is very important, if people are in transformational, in a transformational framework of their mind and their life, they take things and study things and they take things and sometimes they come to conclusions before they got to the end of the study. And so what happens is this happened to me and I had to, I had to relinquish what I thought. You haven't come to the end of your study yet to make that conclusion. Why don't you wait? At the end of the study, then make it the conclusion. But people in transformational process make conclusions a little too soon, and then they didn't get to the end of the study or the end of the matter. Yeah, for sure. And so they they, they get uh, fooled, they get they, or they get hard and fast. They harden themselves because this is good enough. This is what I believe. So nobody can touch them anymore. Yeah. Well, okay, but you know, there's more to you. That, there's more to life than you. And there's a lot more to understand. We don't. We want to. I, I will say that's one of the reasons why you know I've got a little bit of a little bit of feeling about like these apostolic fathers things, but I'm not. I don't know how to move to the next level of what I want to do. Is it's like okay, well let's tie this back to the Greek and actually see these what I would consider problematic statements and see what they actually say. Yep, that will before help. I, before I get too further into it, because some of them I've read, I'm like, this is all good. This is actually really good. Mm, this guy, like for, like first Clement. That's one of them. Uh, first, yeah. first Clements, and it was like this. Generally, is good. This is actually generally good. Why are you now? You're why are you bringing all this authority stuff up? What are you doing here? Yeah, none of this is is yeah, he's so. Informed. But but I'd like to see a little bit further in there to actually go and see it. But to me, I'm I'm pretty. It seems pretty clear to me that this false church has been constructed on at least those English understandings of it. Yep, and we have to incorporate all this stuff into us, into life, and say, all right, now this is what I'm doing with this. And and yeah, you, get right. the, you get the end of your your realiz, realiza, realization, and then you can make some conclusions. But 
I would caution people to make conclusions because I'm still making conclusions. That I, I will make a conclusion, and I'm going to put this on me so I can speak very specifically about this. We'll have to get to... I, I actually got some... Uh, I do have a conclusion that came away from that, and it, and it was talked about in that video, but after reading it, I'm not going to say with like some whatever or nature of authority, but I will definitely say after reading Paul, I, I'm kind of renewed in the belief of building up other people. Oh, the no edification, the construction of other people is of critical urgency. And that's part of this podcast. We're talking about catching the vision. You need to catch this vision yep. is that the people that are around you, which you can't escape. I've, I've escaped a lot of people in, in my, my, my years. I'm very cautious about that kind of thinking now that if you have instead, these are the people that I am with instead of just going, what are their flaws? And how do they annoy me all the time? Instead, think how can how can we put them? Maybe realign them where they need to be. Yeah. How, especially if they're they're struggling. Maybe they're in the wrong spot. Maybe they're not. Maybe they need some training. How can you build them up? Maybe they need encouragement. That these kinds of things and and leaving this kind of Paul studying of the church. Big believer of like purpose of church is to build people. And Paul, the last couple of years of his life, you read it really thick, really deeply, and pay attention to what he said. He was alive for the Lord and for people. He was not alive for, I mean, he, he got stoned a few times and God brought him through it. He, he's been through a lot. But his last couple of years was alive for others and others. for God. He had to go to Rome. God said, you're going to Rome, testify to me in Rome. And that's why he lived. Other than that, he, was not, he didn't care. He said, I, I've, I've, got, I've run the race. I've done all, but I'm a lot, I'm here. It's better, it even says in one verse, it's better for me to live is, is Christ and to die is gain, but to stay here is better for you. Yeah, right. That's so right. he lived for them. There's a lot. To, I don't know if I'm there yet. I don't, I, 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 anyway, we'll talk about that another time. You got any uh, last kind of statements here on this disaster? This, this, oh, this yeah, disaster, it's our disaster uh, broadcast. Yeah. yeah, don't have disasters. <laughs> Don't have them. Then you don't have to worry about it. I mean, that's about it. Well, but I'll definitely... I don't think you get the choice. I don't think you get the... Choice. No, and, um, you know, certainly my... You know, I have kind of a heavy heart for some people out there because they were they were blasted. Like, oh. all the people down in that valley... Oh, they were blasted. They were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were hit pretty hard. And there's some other people... Yeah. It's kind of interesting. There's, I think, from what I was seeing online right now, the three ways into this place... Two of them are gone. Yeah, two of them are gone. <laughs> so I know there's only one way. Sure. There's only one way out of here, <laughs> and it's definitely not the way that I go to work. Yeah, I know. It's, so so um, there you are. it's definitely one of those things that you know, very real. We watch, like I was watching with my own eyes, this river. It, it's normally a tiny creek turned into a river over here, and um, huge. It's, it's one of those things that you know I will impart that in order to be able to lead. Y y it's, I, I cannot impart it enough that you you need to make sure that you're prepared, that you're thinking ahead about like where you're putting a house and these kinds of things, like just the strategy of that, so that you can be in a position to be able to help other people. Yeah. And it may not be on day or you know moment zero, because oftentimes you've got to kind of secure your situation because there's going to be holes in your plan. Don't worry about that. Take care of that. Squelch the fires. Don't immediately start cleaning up because you don't need to clean up because there's other things that are going on and getting out there and helping people. And I think that that's, that's a position that I think we want to get in. That's exactly right. I agree. So, um, in fact, I got to go check on somebody right now yep. that nobody can get hold of them because there's no internet, there's no phone. There's, you know, You're talking about going out that way? No, I got to go back the way I came. Oh, I see. But, um, so anyways, with that, uh, we'll see you next time and, and definitely would like, love to see your comments <laughs> and, uh, we'll see you. Blessings. Bye-bye.